Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Stephen King review. If you're feeling confused, asking yourself why hasn't, uh, but hadn't, hasn't he already reviewed these? No, I have not. I have done my Thursday Theorist series, which you can find at the end of the video. It'll be one of the, you know, the videos at the end, uh, up there with the subscribe button. But today we are talking about the complete uncut version of the stand. Uh, also, before we get started, I want to uh, let me let me put this up. This is a big chunker to be. Yeah, it's a it's a big book. Anyways, um, so I will be doing once I'm done covering all of these Stephen King reviews, um, catching up with all that stuff. I'm going to be starting a new series where I break down the original version of the stand. Uh, I have two of these old paperbacks. Uh, my buddy uh, uh, Mike sent me one, and then someone else sent me another one. I don't even think they put on the address, or I didn't know who it was who sent it to me. But anyways, if you're the person who sent it, thank you so much, and let yourself be known. But I will be doing a side-by-side -side comparison, doing one chapter every Thursday, where I tell the differences between the complete uncut edition and the original edition. It's like 400 pages difference. I think King cut 150,000 words to appease his editor so that they could get it out. Um, the history behind this is uh, Doubleday couldn't didn't have a way to make such a big book, and they still didn't 100% trust um, in King's sellability, which is funny because we got the Carrie movie and all that, but um, another thing is the uh, original edition, the first edition, hang on here, the first edition is the size, it's much smaller, as you can see, it's a book club edition size because they didn't want to... I didn't want to put all that money into him and put all this stuff back. Um, so the book club editions and the first edition are the same size, but of course the book club edition says that it is a book club edition. Um, the, the This one, of course, uh, returns, brings back all the stuff that King uh, cut out of the original one, which is the entire opening with Champ Campion, Champion? I think it's Campion. Um, with him escaping the facility at the beginning, that's completely gone. So that first episode, when I do my side-by-side -side comparison, is probably just going to be me saying, okay, this is what happens in the prologue that was uh, returned to the uh, complete uncut edition. Uh, and the original edition doesn't even have it. It has a different, uh, not a different ending, but it stops before the ending that you read in this version. Um, there's so many, so many things that are different. Uh, it doesn't have uh, the kid in it at all. Uh, the, you know, of course, the kid, the one that, uh, well, if you've read the book, you, if you've read the complete uncut edition, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's when Trash and the kid meet. That whole thing is completely gone. Uh, but anyways, on to the review of this one. I actually prefer this one over the original. A lot of people think that the original version is tighter, um, that it's better, but some of my favorite scenes have been cut out of had been cut out of the original version, which is the kid, the the opening sequence where he's trying to get out, um, all that stuff. In fact, every time I read the complete uncut edition, uh, when it opens up, I hear "Don't fear the reaper." I think it's actually quoted in the book too at the beginning. I hear uh, "Don't fear the reaper" from Blue Oyster Cult, which is of course how the original miniseries went. Um, I'm not going to be talking about the adaptations here, um, but the I'm going to keep my opinions uh, to myself about both of them. Uh, but the book, it the, the only issue that I have, and I, I talked about this in the original version because it's pretty much the same on this level, is when they start rebuilding Boulder, I lose interest up until the end, um, up until the final the final fight. Uh, the the final fight is uh, it's polarizing for fans. Uh, my buddy Josh thinks that you know it couldn't have happened any other way, really. That he was leading up to that. Um, I'm of the mindset that it is one of the biggest. What is it? Do es mach do. Do es machina, whatever uh, endings ever, uh, where it's I don't know that it's a cop out, but it really is. Uh, I mean, by definition, it is pretty much literally do es machina. Um, 
I I do find that uh, with the uncut, with the complete and uncut edition, I get more involved in the storyline than I do with the cut edition. The book is fantastic. It is a classic. Um, it. It revol- if you do- if you don't know it uh, the end of the world is brought upon by a disease called Captain Trips, um, and everybody gets sick, dies. It's a terrible thing. They, their faces swell with mucus. It's it, it's disgusting. Um, and then after that, there are certain survivors. There are the good ones, the bad ones, some in between. That's I think that's the best part of the book. Some of the best characters are in the gray area between you know truly dark and and truly light Um, but everybody has their flaws all these characters it is a smorgasbord of amazing character development for some reason again I like this one more than I like the original Uh, so my question is for you uh, out there uh, do you like which one do you like have you even read the original it's so hard to come by like uh, I had I had to have people send me copies. Again, thanks very much, Mike, and thank you very much to the stranger who sent me the other one. Um, this one, I believe this one is the one that uh, that Mike sent me, and the other one is very strange. It has like a, a glaring almost, you know, the face of what Pazuzu in The Exorcist, um, where they you get those flashes, the subliminal uh, flashes of Pazuzu. Um, it has like that on the cover. I should have brought it out here, but I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you guys when I do the next series where I'll do the side-by-side comparison. Um, and a big cross and lightning striking the cross it almost fits Revival uh, more than if it's that one and that book came like 30 years later. But anyways, uh, I, I prefer this one. Uh, to go uh, give you a little more in-depth uh, without going into spoilers, you have two different factions, one led by Randall Flagg and one led by Mother Abigail. Uh, Mother Abigail is a, a psychic. She, uh, well, I don't know that she's psychic. I think she's more, I don't know, she, she's able to go into people's dreams and bring them, you know, together into Boulder, Colorado, where they end up rebuilding society. And then you have Randall Flagg, who takes over Las Vegas, which is, of course, is Sin City. Where else is he going to go? Um, and the the differences in the characters, you know, the the good and the bad. My my favorite. My favorite part of the book, of course, is the characters. But uh, my favorite characters, uh, you got Nick Andros um, and Tom Cullen are two of my favorite characters of all time. Period, hands down. I love those two characters. Uh, the Harold is, is a great. Uh, not really gray shaded character, you know. He's definitely a bad guy, um, but I really enjoyed reading about him. I, I never cared too much for Stu or Franny. Um, I like their stories. The character development is great, but the, their stories kind of pale in comparison to you know the other ones that I mentioned. Um, but the the question for you today, like I said, have you read the original edition? If you have, if you've read both editions, tell me which ones that you prefer down there in the doobly-doo. Tell me why you like them so that we can have a discussion. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Stephen King book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!